Welcome to today's session. Today we are going to see what is weighted average ensemble. So before we start with the topic, first let me tell you what is ensemble. Uh, we all are familiar with creating a machine learning model or a deep learning model. We are creating a model so that it mimic the human brain, right? So we can use this model either for image classification or uh, voice to text or text to voice or we can also use for text analysis. So we use uh, models to perform all these works. Okay. Uh, but when we create a single model, sometimes the prediction or the accuracy of the model will be completely biased because we use only one model. Let me tell you an example. Suppose you want to buy the uh, shares of a company. Okay, so uh, before you buy the shares of a company, you uh, uh, try to ask uh, suggestions from different types, different peoples, right? Maybe you ask suggestion from your friend, uh, you ask suggestion from uh, the brokers, from the uh, uh, stock industry, or you ask suggestions from um, the ex-employee of that company or the competitor company, right? You try to ask your uh, suggestions uh, from different types of people, right? Not on the same type of people, like from different uh, people with different background, right? Similarly, when you are creating a machine learning model or a deep learning model, completely depending on one model may not give you the correct prediction okay maybe the model is completely biased um, uh, maybe uh, he's biased so for example uh, your friend is completely uh, biased on uh, one company and he always recommends that company share um, okay so like that model also will be biased or sometimes the model will have high variance so your uh, model's performance will be affected because of these two factors okay uh, so if you take any machine learning model okay so always uh, there is limitations in creating a single model. Uh, so uh, maybe that model is a weak learner and they have high bias or they have a high variance. So if you want to overcome that, definitely you have to go for ensemble model. Okay, so here you can see any machine learning or deep learning model will definitely suffer from high bias and high variance. Okay, so a model which is not learning perfectly will be definitely suffering from bias error. Okay, high bias. It will have a high bias. So the model which is underfitting, okay, uh, uh, will have high bias. A model which is overfitting learns too much of the input data will also uh, uh, cannot predict the test data so will not predict the unseen data correctly so that model will have high variance so any model with high bias and high variance are not um, a robust model okay so you cannot always trust on a single model to get a robust model okay so we have to go for a ensemble model so what is ensemble model the art of combining diverse set of learners or base learners they are called as base learners so you will not create one model you will create multiple models and these multiple models are called as base learners and these learners will be heterogeneous learners heterogeneous means not same type of learners different type of learners each have Having capability of learning um, in a different way, have a different architectures, uh, uh, different levels. Okay, so you create a, um, a heterogeneous uh, learners. Okay, diverse set of learners, so that you can able to create a robust model. You can improve the performance of your model by improving its accuracy. So that is what is called as ensemble model. So something like this. So in this diagram, you can see there are uh, uh, many classifier models like C1, C2, and so on, CM, right? Uh, so all these models takes the same data set okay and gives its own predictions and you can combine these predictions using any of the voting techniques there are different voting techniques you can use any one of the voting techniques and you can combine these predictions for example uh, in my previous video i showed you how to create a uh, average model averaging ensemble just take the average of all the predictions and you will get your final prediction and today's video in this video we are going to see how to take weighted average of all the predictions uh, actually when you are taking the average of all the predictions uh, sometimes some learners will be very good some learners may perform very poor so if you are trying to give equal important for all the learners then it is called as model averaging suppose you give weightage for each uh, model then that is called as uh, weighted model uh, averaging again come back to the same example you want to buy a stock of a company you will give high weightage to the person who is an ex-employee of a company and who is a uh, 
स्टॉक ब्रोकर और और अ पर्सन हु इज वर्किंग इन द कॉम्पिटिटर कंपनी सो यू गिव हाई वेटेज फॉर दोज पीपल्स इन सर्ट ऑफ गिविंग वेटेज फॉर योर फ्रेंड और योर फैमिली मेंबर्स राइट बिकॉज दे आर नॉट कमिंग फ्रॉम दैट बैकग्राउंड राइट सो वेन यू हैव मल्टीपल मॉडल्स यू ट्राई टू गिव वेटेज फॉर द मॉडल विच परफॉर्म्स वेरी वेल ओके इन योर प्रोडिक्शन सो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज वेटेड एवरेज मॉडल ओके सो इन मॉडल एवरेजिंग एज आई टोल्ड ऑल द मॉडल्स आर गिवन इक्वल प्रियोरिटी जस्ट टेक द predictions of each model and do an average to get your final prediction so there is a limitation here because every model is given the same weightage so we go okay uh, so we go for um, uh, weighted average so in in averaging you see just uh, this is model 1's uh, predicted value this is model 2's predicted value this is model 3's predicted value okay so these are the predicted value just take an average okay so here all the models are given same um uh, priority or uh, same weightage okay so all are treated uh, same but in weighted average example you can give weight uh, for each model which model is performing better for that model you can give high weights okay so that is called as weighted average example so for example if you see um you have three models m1 m2 and m3 so m1's uh, this is the m1's uh, prediction value so you give weightage 2 m2's uh, uh, value and you give weightage 1 and m3 is also given the weightage 2 so if this is a predicted value you have to multiply the predicted value by 2 okay so uh, third prediction also you have multi uh, you have to multiply by prediction value Two. So when you multiply, you will get this as a final result. See, when it is multiplied by two, you will get this as a final result. And then you have to calculate the average of these weighted um, uh, values. Okay, so we have to add all the three and divide it by five because the weight is five. Okay, so that will be your final prediction. So you can see, add all and divided by five will be your average. So this will be your final prediction. Okay, so this is weighted average ensemble. So to summarize, what is ensemble? Always in machine learning and deep learning, instead of relying on one model performance, it is always better to create multiple models. Okay, uh, which is coming from a different background, um, uh, which is having different learning capability, um, which is uh, robustness. Okay, you can take uh, different models and then you can combine the predictions of these models to get a, uh, a, a robust model. Okay, so you can combine these predictions. Now, how will you combine these predictions? Either you can use averaging, model averaging, or you can use weighted averaging. So when you use model averaging, all the models will be given same weight, will be treated equally. when you give weighted um, average example every model will be given a weight based on the capability of the model to learn the uh, data set so based on that or how the performance of the model you will assign the weights for the model and finally the predictions will be combined okay so this is a concept of weighted average example now i'm going to show you a example code uh here is a example code so now um, i have my data set now you can see i'm dividing my data set uh, actually the data set that i have taken is uh, uh, a gastric tract disorder data set which is available in kaggle the name of the data set is called as kvsr data set now i divided the data set into training and uh, validation so here you can see it is uh, 80 20 percentage i divided uh, the data set into 80 20 percentage and then these are the class labels available in the data set there are uh, eight different classes here you can see dried lifted polyp dried uh, resurrection uh, resection margin esophagitis okay so there are eight uh, classes here okay and uh, this is for uh, normalizing the values um this part of the code and also to uh, fetch the uh, you know the images uh, will be um Uh, having pixel value ranging from one to two fifty five, right? But uh, your machine learning or deep learning can process only ones and zeros, so you have to uh, standardize those values or you have to normalize those values. So for that, we use this normalization. And the next one will be to uh, fetch some of the images and put it into the buffer, so that while training, uh, the training process will be very quick. Okay, so this part of the co code uh, does that, and then uh, you can come here. We are developing a, a, a dense net model. uh we are just loading the densnet model so we are not uh, uh, creating any model from the scratch here uh, i'm trying to load the existing model the existing model is densnet model here okay so i'm going to use three models here so the first model is the uh, densnet model 
just uh, download the model as it is and the, just on top of the model I'm going to add a uh, global average pooling layer then I'm adding a dense layer then I'm having a dropout layer and final last layer is your output layer so here you can see eight neurons because we have eight uh, different classes okay uh, so the first model I have loaded is the uh, dense net model okay now you can see I'm compiling the first model okay and I'm calling the fit function for the first model so you can see the accuracy of the model is around 89 percentage okay the validation accuracy is 89 percentage is the highest I'm just training only for five epochs because it will take very long time um, and maybe the performance improves when you train for more number of epochs I'm just showing only for the first five epochs so it is around 89 okay so this is my first model now I am saving my first model okay I save my first model because I'm going to load it later and create an ensemble okay so this first model is a dense net model the second model that I'm going to use is the um, inception v3 model okay so inception v3 model so here you can see uh, the top layers I'm not loading the top layers so here you can see the top layers I'm not loading um, and then uh, I'm going to add some few layers as I did in the uh, dense net I'm going to add global average pooling dense layer dropout layer and final layer is the output layer with eight neurons so this is my model 2 model 2 is my inception v3 now I compile my model I fit my model and then I save my model okay so I train it and then I save it okay and the third model is the uh, ResNet model so here you can see the uh, ResNet model ResNet 50 model uh, the same steps I follow as I do for model 1 and model 2 um, and then uh, you, here you can see model number 3 model number 3 is the ResNet 50 I compile the model I fit the model and then I save the model okay so now still now we have three models okay model 1 is dense net model 2 is uh, inception v3 and model 3 is the uh, ResNet okay so we have three models with us now I'm going to load all the models so already they are trained and then it is uh, saved now I'm going to load all these three models back see model 1 model 2 and model 3 I'm just loading all these models okay and then you can see here I'm going to create list of models you have m1 m2 and m3 okay so now I'm going to create an ensemble model so what will be the input for the ensemble model okay model input uh, this is the input uh, shape okay the image that you're going to pass the data set this is the shape of the image that is your input and how your output should be output should be like this see average of model output so this is um, averaging method okay so I'm just uh, creating an average of model output this is my output okay so every model I'm going to give equal weightage and I'm just going to do the average ensemble model okay so when I create the average see now I'm going to compile my ensemble model and I'm going to uh, fit the model so you can see the validation accuracy is around 86 percentage so previously you saw the um, validation accuracy for the third model is 73 and the second model is 71 and the first model is around 89 but when you do an average now you can see so 89 now you can see there is a decrease in accuracy in the ensemble model see in the ensemble model two percentage is decreased actually uh, definitely the accuracy will increase but you have to run for more number of epochs but uh, since it is average taking an average you can see the accuracy comes down because you're taking average so uh, uh, so you can go for another type called as weighted uh, ensemble model because you're going to give weightage see the first model so here you can see um, see dense net um, yeah just a minute see dense net for example yeah the first model see the first model accuracy the first model accuracy is around 89 so you can give high weightage for the uh, model one and then you can give a low weightage for the next two models see the next model uh, accuracy is 71 and the third model accuracy is around 73 so you can give less weightage for the model 2 and model 3 and give high weightage for model 1 so when you give like that your ensemble model will perform well so let me create the uh, uh, weighted average layer so here you can see uh, this is your model and these are the weights can you see w1 w2 w3 are the uh, weights of the model and then multiply with the uh, inputs that you are 
passing width. So input 0, input 1 and input 2 are the predictions of model 1, model 2 and model 3. So you are multiplying the predictions with the uh, weight of these models. Okay, And then uh, your output will be weighted average layer and these are the weights you are passing. So first model I am giving the highest weight 0 0.6. For second model I give 0 0.3. For third model I give 0 0.1. Okay, so uh, this is the weightage I'm giving for the model. Now I compile my ensemble model. Then I call fit for the ensemble model. And finally, I uh, run my ensemble model. You can see the validation accuracy is around 91 percentage. So when you uh, create individual model, you can see the first model, the individual model, the maximum accuracy was 89, right? And when you do a model averaging, the accuracy reduced to 86 because you gave equal weightage for all the models. But now when you create a weighted uh, average ensemble, you can see the average of the model increases because you give high weightage for the uh, good performing model. Okay, So here you, give, uh, you get the average as 91.79. So this is how you can improve the accuracy by creating an average of, uh, sorry, by creating an ensemble of uh, base learners. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed the session. See you in another video. Thank you.